Hello friends, my name is Rohit Bansal and today we will be talking about cyber crimes. Computer crime, which is also known as cyber crime, are the type of crimes in which digital devices like computers, laptops, mobile phones and other such devices are directly or indirectly involved. Cyber crimes are happening at a much higher rate today than seen in the past decade. Some of the major crime carried out in today's world include phishing, hacking, cyber stalking, extortion, ransomware, malware, dissemination, and wishing. Cyber crime has become one of the biggest concern of the world, just behind issues like terrorism, population explosion, and global warming. The major reason of increase in the cyber crime Trends of the world include increased penetration of ICT, digital devices, becoming affordable and portable, and the widely spreading net of internet services. Platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Reddit were created to connect distant people and to bring people closer. Such social media platforms have since become breeding ground for a wide variety of criminal activities. Cybercrime in India let's understand that. The statistics re released by the National Crime Record Bureau, NCRB, assert that a total of 12,317 cases have been registered under cybercrime in 2016. Majority of such cases actually go unreported and hence never make it to the official statistics. These statistics just point to the tip of a very large iceberg. In 2016, Uttar Pradesh had reported the highest number of cybercrime cases, which is 2,639, followed by Maharashtra with 2,380 cases and Karnataka, which is 1,101 cases. Other leading states, including Rajasthan, Assam, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. These rising trends of cybercrimes, when correlated with the traditional crime statistics of these states, reveals that almost every traditional crimes like robbery, kidnapping, and frauds have provable digital fingerprints. In simple terms, the criminals are now turning tech savvy. The reliability of NCRB data largely depends upon the reporting of cases. Nevertheless, the emergence of new states in the cybercrime is either the result of increasing awareness among the people to report the cybercrime or there is an absolute increase in the number of cybercrime cases. In the year 2018, the Computer Emergency Response Team of India, cert in handled 2,8456 incidents. The types of incident handled were website intrusion and malware propagation, malicious code, phishing, distributed denial of service attacks, website defacement, unauthorized scanning activities, and vulnerable services. Let's understand major type of cyber crimes. Cyber crimes can be classified into two distinct categories, people-oriented and technology-oriented. People-oriented attacks are the attacks which takes advantage of the apparent gullibility of netizens, people trust by nature, and people-oriented attack often use this nefarious purposes. Such attacks, also known as social engineering attacks, often involve establishing communication with the victim through the social media or through phone or making them perform specific actions like revealing confidential information, making monetary transactions, harvesting their usernames and password. Technology-oriented attacks are focused on exploiting the subtle weakness in an IT infrastructure or application to gain access and hamper the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the system. Such attacks carried out by a skilled individual known as hackers and often require the use of specific tools and a good deal of programming. Such common examples of attacks include SQL injection, brute force attack, server hacking, and Wi-Fi hacking. Irrespective of the attack type, such attacks 
can often be mitigated by careful planning and rigorous assessment of people, process and technology. In this module, we shall be discussing about the following major type of cyber attacks, phishing and ransomware attack. Now let us understand what is phishing. Phishing is the foremost type of social engineering attack that in general involves an email, chat or website that has been planned to impersonate authentic systems and associations. The main goal of phishing is to capture sensitive data. A sudden message crafted to convey a sense of emergency with the requirement of verify your login information. The email message might come from an institute, government office or a bank. It will generally be mocked or replicate copy of original login page with all the accurate logos to look genuine. Phishing messages ask the user to verify their bank credential information and thus get details of the sensitive data via email phishing. Now let us see the type of phishing attacks. Spear phishing. Spear phishing is a more targeted attempt to steal sensitive information and typically focuses on a specific individual or an organization. These type of attack use personal information that is specific to the individual in order to appear legitimate. The cyber criminals will often turn to social media and company websites to research their victims. Once they have better understanding of their target, they start to send personalized email which include links which once clicked infects a computer with malware. Now let us see what is wishing. Wishing is a rapidly growing social engineering attack which is known as voice phishing or phone elicitation. The word wishing is derived from an amalgamation of voice and phishing. Wishing attempts are complicated to observe and mark out as they use IP based voice messaging to socially manipulate the victim into providing his or her personal financial or other secret information. Employees in an organization, particularly the sales and the HR departments are extremely susceptible to these type of attacks as they lack proper training and awareness program. Wishing is aided by voice over IP or VOIP technology. Here the attacker uses IP telephony services to connect to the international services which route the phone call through VOIP servers. Once the victim picks up the call, the fisher use email or automated phone messages to notify consumers of account problems. Recipients are asked to call a toll free number to resolve their problem. When victim calls, they hear what is sound like legitimate automated phone message. Victims are asked to provide account numbers, passwords or social security numbers which are then sold to the internet and used to commit identity fraud. Such attacks are often used to dupe naive users. The attackers may pose a bank official, a law enforcement agencies or even the IT department. There are cases where the victims even reveal their credit card information, ATM pins, one time passwords to the attackers. People lose around $1 million annually on Paytm due to wishing frauds. Vision mimics the legitimate way people interact with their financial institution. So victims are more likely to respond without the hesitation. People trust phone transaction more than they trust the internet. Because the traceability and the cost of landline or cellular phone services make mass phone fraud impractical. But VOIP services ha has rendered the security blanket inoperative. Now let us understand what is veiling. What distinguishes this category of phishing from other is the high level choice of targets. A veiling attack is an attempt to steal sensitive information and is often targeted at senior management. Veiling emails are lot more sophisticated than your run of the mill phishing emails and much harder to spot. The emails when often contain the personalized information about the target or an organization. 
and the language will be more corporate in tone. A lot of effort and thought will go into the crafting of these emails due, due to the high level of return for the cyber criminals. Smishing. Smishing is a type of phishing which uses SMS messages as opposed to the email to target individuals. It is another effective way of cyber criminals tricking individuals into divulging personal information such as the account details, credit card details, or username and passwords. This method involves the fraudster sending a text message to an individual's phone number, and then usually it includes a call to action that requires an immediate response. Now let's understand the next point, which is clone phishing. Clone phishing is where a legitimate and previously delivered email is used to create an identical email with malicious content. The cloned email will appear to come from the original sender, but will be an updated version that contains malicious links or attachments. Similar attacks can be done over SMS, WhatsApp, and other social media chat rooms. Now let's understand the identification of phishing attacks. How can we identify these things? Phishing attacks can be easily identified by some specific indications over the messages received. The first one is unusual sender. Whether it looks like it's from someone you don't know or someone you do know, if anything seems out of ordinary, unexpected, out of character, or just suspicious in general, don't click on it. Too good to be true, lucrative offers, and eye-catching or an attention-grabbing statements are designed to attack people's attention immediately. Create a, create a sense of urgency. Phishing emails often try to create a sense of urgency to the recipients. They try to make user execute certain actions like clicking on a specific link, downloading files, sharing confidential information, etc. Now, let's understand how phishing scams work. A consumer receives an email which appears to originate from a legitimate institution and it urges you to verify or resubmit personal or confidential information by clicking on a link embedded in the message. The provided link appears to go to the website of the said institution. But in phishing scams, the website belongs to the scammer. Once the fraudulent website, the consumer may be asked to provide their confidential information like date of birth, their Aadhaar number, account number, or the password. It may also try to gain answers to your recovery questions. When the consumer provides the information, the scammer can begin to access consumer's account or assume the person's identity. Now let's see how we prevent the phishing attacks. Preventing phishing attacks is a simple matter of common sense and caution. Some major points that can help us in identifying a phishing attack are as follows. The first one, which is very important, is think before acting. Always slow down the process of response to doubtful emails. In case the message conveys a sense of hurry or urgency, never let their importance control your cautious review. The next point is always research the facts. It is good to be suspicious about unsolicited messages. In case the email looks like it is from a genuine provider, still do your own research. Be attentive while sharing any information and use a search engine or phone directory to locate their phone numbers and give them a call. The other thing could be delete suspicious emails. Always delete suspicious email and any request for your financial information. In case you get asked to reply to any message or visit any website, then be very cautious and report the email as a spam. The next thing is reject unknown request. Genuine and reliable companies and organizations do not ask you for help or request. In case 
you get a request for help from a charitable trust or organization with which you do not have a relationship, then just delete it. To give some help to a charity, seek out trustworthy charitable organization on your own to evade falling for a scam. The other thing which is very important is be aware of any downloads. In case you are getting any unrecognized email, then ignore the mail from the unknown sender. Downloading files from unknown emails is a serious mistake. The next thing is verify the site's security. Always verify the site's security by looking for HTTPS in the site's URL. Also check the site security certificate before providing the sensitive information. The next thing is verify sender email. Verification of the sender domain and the URL also plays an important role in identification of phishing attacks. If the sender email address looks suspicious, it probably is a type of phishing attack. Now let's understand ransomware. What is ransomware? Ransomware is no new terminology for current IT industry. Ever since its inception as an effective and commercial malware in 2005, it has undergone various upgrades. Essentially, ransomware are malwares that uses mathematical problems to lock or encrypt your data. They either lock you out of the operating system or prevent you from accessing your data. With the underground ransomware economy touching almost 1 billion by 2016, ransomware has become one of the biggest revenue source of several black hat criminals. By the year 2018, it cost businesses more than 8 billion per year. The whole idea of ransomware criminal is to use your negligence towards proper IT hygiene and your desperation to access your data into making you pay. Typically, ransomware are broadly categorized into two families. Crypto ransomware. It encrypts your file, folders, and all private non-generic information on the system of your organization. It can use the symmetric or asymmetric encryption techniques to encrypt the data. Then you are prompted to pay the ransom to release the key. The other type is Locky ransomware. This family of ransomware restricts access to your operating system by encrypting critical operating system files. The data is stored in your PC remains unaffected but gain access to your operating system and hence you need to pay the ransom. Now let's see the recent attacks on businesses. Ransomware have caused a lot of trouble for a various businesses across the world. Ransomware attacks are diverse and swift. Some of the top ransomware attacks in the past few years are listed below. The first one, recent wave of Patia ransomware crippled businesses and critical infrastructure across the world, including the Jawaharlal Nehru port in India, Marsec and Racket Bank Kaiser. Another ransomware wanna cry this was in mid-2017, spread across the world, affecting the NHS of England, close to 50,000 systems in India, including several police stations and banks. Religare was recently hit by a ransomware attack identified as Zyka strain. Tesla Crypt targeted ancillary files associated with video games, saved games, maps, downloadable content. Simple Locker attacked Android mobile phones. Ryuk is another targeted ransomware variant that hit big in 2018 and 2019, with its victim being chosen specifically as organizations with little tolerance for the downtime. Ransomware are becoming profitable and unique business proposition for the guy black hat hackers. Over the years, the average ransom size has more than doubled. Now let's see what is the modus operandi of the ransomware. 
the modus operandi of ransomware criminals involves three phases. The first one is propagation. Criminal uses various channels to spread the ransomware into the target network. It may involve infecting the traffic distribution, malvertisement, sending e spam emails, or using botnets. Social engineering is also one of the most preferred ways to spread ransomware in the targeted computers. Apart from these, there are various affiliate schemes launched by ransomware terrorists wherein you are given a certain revenue share for every victim you infect. Ransomware as a service or RAAS is a new domain where you can enlist the services of ransomware criminals to attack a competitor or your adversary. There are also quid pro quo schemes where you have the option to pay ransomware or you can agree to infect two other victims in exchange for getting the decryption key. Mind games. Once the target is infected with ransomware, then starts the mind games. The objective of this phase is to coerce the victim into paying the ransom. This can be achieved using a variety of schemes like appealing to the brand value of the target, displaying fake law enforcement messages, analyzing the behavior of the victim via their data and to craft coercion messages based on it. Something as trivial as displaying a small countdown depicting when the ransom is due goes a long way. This can include displaying a countdown timer for when the data will be permanently deleted or when the ransom will be doubled. The third one is ransom value. This is the last phase where the ransomware criminal puts a price on the data or the system held ransom. This can be determined by a variety of factors, brand value of company, urgency of data, importance of data to that company. As an example, consider the case where all the guests of the hotel in Austria were logged out due to a ransomware attack. It became pertinent for the hotel to pay. However, the hotel denied ever paying the ransom. The value of the data depends from company to company. For an early stage startup, the value of the data repositories is much less as compared to a firms like Facebook or Twitter. Now let's see the safeguarding techniques. Ransomware is a problem where we have a limited possibility of reactive solutions. The mantra here is prevention is better than cure. The first one in the list is updated operating system and security software. Your operating system and other applications regularly release patches and updates. Make sure to update all your softwares accordingly. A similar logic is applicable to your security softwares antiviruses, anti-phishing tools, and other anti-malware tools. Obsolete anti-malware tools are like blunt knives, a good showpiece, but it is useless. The second is back up your data. This technique that has proven to be most effective against ransomware attacks. If you have scheduled regular backups of your data, you can simply format the infected system and reestablish the entire infrastructure again. This is by far the most effective countermeasure against ransomware attacks. Apart from these techniques, there are some other common countermeasures which can be taken to prevent ransomware attacks. The first one in that list could be use show hidden file extensions so as to prevent accidentally executing malicious scripts on your system. The next is never click on unknown links or download attachments from a untrusted source. The next could be disable Windows scripting host. Others on the list are use ad blocker and web of trust plugins. Also using Linux based system has proven an effective solution in the current scenarios. However, using Linux is not a permanent solution for the problem. 
to sum up this discussion ransomwares are a flourishing business model for numerous criminals this problem will continue to escalate given the added boost to cryptocurrency provided by it professionals around the world even governments across the world have started recognizing bitcoin as a means of exchange keeping this facts in mind we need to become proactive in our approach there is an urgent need of having industry level safeguards and compliances to check the outbreak of ransomware i hope you have understood the ransomware thanks